Vitamin D annoys me, and I'll tell you why in just a moment, but let me start with a slightly controversial statement. Everybody, everywhere, should be considered vitamin D deficient. It's true, vitamin D deficiency is the most common vitamin deficiency across the world. So it's an important healthcare topic we need to take seriously. For the past 13 years as a doctor, I've helped people achieve their health goals. And today, what I want to cover is why vitamin D is so important, how to know if you're actually deficient, and how to make sure you get enough. So why does it annoy me? Well, picture this. You go to your doctor and this is what they say. I need to tell you something. Smoking is bad for you and can cause lung cancer and heart disease. No shock, right? But what if they said this? I need to tell you something. Vitamin D deficiency is increasing your risk of autoimmune disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, neurocognitive dysfunction. Most people's reaction is, wait, what? Current guidelines are that everybody should be taking vitamin D. But why is it that we all know we should wear a seatbelt when we're driving? We all know that smoking and alcohol is bad. But so many of us don't know about vitamin D. I think it's a failure of public health to actually address it and teach us. So I'm going to take this opportunity to try and raise awareness about vitamin D. Firstly, vitamin D isn't really even a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. It's something that our body produces that affects the way that our cells function. Now, the most famous function of vitamin D is its effect on calcium. It helps our gut absorb calcium, that thing that's really important for our bones. So being very deficient in vitamin D can lead to painful, bendy, brittle bones, conditions that are known as rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults. But here's what people don't realize. Vitamin D plays a role in almost every cell in our bodies. Look at the muscles, for example. Low levels of vitamin D can make our muscles weak, tired, painful, or even cause them to twitch a little bit. Vitamin D even affects our mood. There are higher rates of depression among people who are vitamin D deficient. It's also essential for our immune system. It's probably part of the reason that we all get sicker in winter. We have less vitamin D, our immune system isn't as strong, and it leads to these problems. But there's also evidence to say the flip, that autoimmune conditions where our immune system is overactive is also more common in vitamin D deficiency. And here's the big one. Vitamin D has a role in helping cells divide. So when we're deficient in it, there is an increased risk of things like diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. So clearly, it's important. But how do you know if you're getting enough? The safest approach to this is to say to yourself, well, most people are deficient, so me and you, we're probably deficient too. Because I don't want you to take false reassurance from something like, well, I feel fine, so I must have enough vitamin D. Because vitamin D deficiency is often silent, meaning it doesn't actually cause symptoms. But when it does cause symptoms, they can be vague and surprising. Causing things like constant fatigue, aches and pains, muscle weakness, getting every cold going, feeling low or depressed, even hair loss and slow wound healing. Look, the only way to know for sure is with a blood test. But here's the controversial bit. I don't even think you need one. Why? Well, because vitamin D deficiency is so common, you can safely assume you probably are deficient without a blood test. And this is why the UK guidelines are that everybody should be taking vitamin D supplements, particularly during the winter months. So, how do you top up? Well, there are three main ways to get vitamin D. Sunlight, food, and supplements. Sunlight is the most natural and effective way that our body can make vitamin D. When ultraviolet rays hit our skin, it triggers the process of converting cholesterol type molecule into vitamin D, which goes around the body and does what it's gonna do. But here's the problem. If you live in the UK, or anywhere with some sort of a gloomy winter, 
then the sun between October and March isn't strong enough to properly trigger that process of making vitamin D. Even in the summer when the sun is stronger and the days are longer, a lot of us don't get enough time out in the sun or expose enough skin to the sun or we wear sunscreen, meaning we don't get enough of the sun to make enough vitamin D either. Now some foods do contain vitamin D, but honestly, it's pretty hard to get enough vitamin D from food alone. It's present in oily fish like salmon and mackerel, egg yolks, some fortified foods like cereals and dairy products contain small amounts, but you'd really have to eat ridiculous amounts to reach optimal levels. Given how common deficiency is, supplements are the easiest way to make sure that you get enough vitamin D. But how much? Well, the NHS say that we should take 400 units a day, but here's the tricky, funny thing. If you sit outside in the sun for about 20 minutes to half an hour, you could produce between 10 and 20,000 units. So what's with the disparity there? More on that in a minute. So now that we assume we're all deficient and we can't get enough from food, then we've got to take supplements. Then the next question is, what's the right amount of supplement to take? And can you take too much? So the NHS figure of 400 units a day, which is 10 micrograms, is quite a conservative figure. And it's probably enough to prevent severe deficiency. So it's the absolute minimum that we need. But we're probably safer taking a little bit more than that. So if 400 is a minimum, is there a maximum? Well, yes, you can, but you'd have to take big doses for long periods of time. I'm talking 10,000 units a day plus. And over long periods of time, it can lead to calcium accumulating inside your body, which can cause aches and pains and things like kidney stones. But here's the weird thing. Sitting outside with exposed skin in the summer can quite easily produce 10,000 units. So will that lead to kidney stones long term? Well, no, because the skin is different to the gut. The skin has a way of turning off vitamin D production when it's got enough. So you can't overdose on sunlight from a vitamin D perspective anyway. So the sweet spot for most people is 1,000 to 2,000 units a day. Safe, effective, and enough to keep your levels high during winter. So I think over time, vitamin D awareness is improving and more people are becoming aware of the importance of it. But it's always been overshadowed by a different vitamin, one that's more famous than it. One that's been claimed to slow aging, improve immunity and cure illnesses. In fact, it's so popular that the industry is worth billions today. And its story is one that's full of controversy, bold claims and a genius who changed the world forever. It's the story of vitamin C, something I've looked into and created this video here for you to have a look at. A very interesting story. I hope you enjoyed today's video and hopefully I'll see you over there. Thank you for watching.